How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a look at the second half of the Barbenheimer phenomenon, Oppenheimer. This is the latest movie to be written and directed by Christopher Nolan and stars Killian Murphy, Emily Blunt, and Robert Downey Jr. As the title would suggest, this is the mostly true story of J. Robert Oppenheimer. It covers his education and career and the creation of the atomic bomb and him being celebrated by and later betrayed by his government, plus the role that Louis Strauss played in that betrayal and how it ultimately led to his downfall. This is interesting because I personally find Christopher Nolan to be, especially of late, an incredibly frustrating filmmaker. He is incredibly brilliant and talented and has a wonderful gift for storytelling. And at the same time, he continues to crawl farther and farther up his own ass as the years go by. And someone desperately needs to reach in and pull him out before he becomes a singularity. I admit that based on popular reaction to his recent films, I may be in the minority. Actors clearly enjoy working with him. Robert Downey Jr., Emily Blunt, and Matt Damon all took pay cuts to be in this movie. Now, granted, for them, a pay cut means they only get $4 million. Boo-hoo. But still, and before anyone tries to twist my words there, let it be known I do support the SAG after strike. So there. But anyway, Nolan continues to make decisions that I just find baffling and downright annoying at times. Like his decision to release Tenet to theaters in the middle of a pandemic. Now, all that said... I do think Oppenheimer is a good movie. I don't think it's a great movie. I suppose we can start with the stuff that makes it good. Uh, Murphy clearly went all out for this role, and I would not be surprised if he got an Oscar nomination. He portrays a very conflicted man who accomplished something extraordinary, but at a great cost. Not just personal cost, as he was hung out to dry by Strauss, but a cost to humanity as well. Because like that old Flash video says, at some point we are going to blow ourselves up, and we will probably deserve it. Okay. Murphy lost a lot of weight for this role as well, a scary amount, which he said he does not recommend. No one should. And he is a compelling presence on screen, and a very complex character. Nolan is not really taking a stance one way or the other on whether Oppenheimer should be revered or reviled. He pretty much leaves that up to the audience. One could certainly make a case for both, and they may not be mutually exclusive. He created something horrible at the behest of the U.S. government, and said government later hung him out to dry for completely bullshit reasons. Speaking of, Robert Downey Jr. is really good as Strauss. With the way his hair looks, and with all of his scenes being shot in black and white, I almost didn't recognize him. I would not be surprised if he also got an Oscar nomination. And he portrays Strauss as a slimy bastard. If the story has a villain, it's him. Although I'm not sure it necessarily has any heroes. The movie doesn't actually show any of the destruction caused by the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's hinted at rather than shown, which I think is totally fine. I don't think there was any need to show it here. It's been shown in other media. It's nothing people aren't already familiar with. And showing it here would have just been gratuitous. Instead, they choose to portray the horror another way by showing how dropping the bombs on Japan was completely unnecessary. Germany had already surrendered by this point, and thanks to documents that have since been declassified, we now know Japan was on the verge of surrender. They also mentioned the incredible reason for why Kyoto was not included as a target. The sad thing is, we did not drop the bombs to end the war. We did it purely as a demonstration of our superiority. And it was only a temporary superiority, because now we got like eight different countries with nuclear arsenals. And what I personally find more horrifying than seeing the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki is knowing that we did so for no good goddamn reason. Clearly, a lot of work went into the making of this movie, including a full reconstruction of Los Alamos, where they tested the atom bomb, and the attention to detail there is amazing. And according to Nolan, there is no CGI in the movie at all. And if that is true, that is damned impressive, especially in this day and age. Arguably unnecessary, but impressive. Now let's get to the stuff that keeps this movie from being great. For one thing, I have said many times that your movie should be as long as it needs to be to tell your story. This movie did not need to be three hours long. The movie spends entirely too much time talking about Oppenheimer's relationship with Gene Tatlock, played by Florence Pugh, and I honestly could not care less. This also included one of the movie's dumber moments, where Oppenheimer and Tatlock are in the midst of making sweet love, but then she suddenly stops and goes and grabs a book off the shelf, 
hands it to Oppenheimer, and demands that he read a passage from Bhagavad Gita while they're going at it. I'm not kidding, she's actually writing him while he's reading I Am Become Death, Destroyer of Worlds. And I confess, I don't know a whole lot about the history of Mr. J. Robert Oppenheimer, but I'm pretty confident that that shit did not happen. But I suppose I've learned what Christopher Nolan's fetish is and I feel I am worse off for it. Also, Nolan and several people have made a huge deal about this movie being shot in IMAX, and I really do not understand why. I personally saw it in a regular-ass theater on a regular-ass screen, and I cannot imagine how seeing it in IMAX would have benefited my experience in any way. I've even seen people post comparison shots online of all the different aspect ratios you can see the movie in, and they're acting like you're missing out on so much, and I'm looking at it and thinking, are we? I mean, people made fun of Zack Snyder, and rightly so, when he did this with Justice League. Why is Nolan being celebrated for it? I've seen posts online from people saying, I gotta drive two hours to get to my nearest IMAX theater, and I'm like, no, no, you don't. You can see it at your local Cineplex and you'll be fine. Some movies absolutely do benefit from being shot in IMAX. Dunkirk, for example, which was a Christopher Nolan movie. That was absolutely made for IMAX. I'm so glad I got a chance to see it in IMAX. That is still one of the best theater-going experiences of my life. I cannot imagine that Oppenheimer needed this in any way. I hesitate to throw out the word pretentious because that tends to be overused, but I think it applies here. I was also a little disappointed that the movie just glossed over the fact that Los Alamos was built on stolen Native American territory. They kicked all of those people off their land with virtually no notice just so we could build a bomb that we did not need, and it's shameful. Really, the only hint of this was when President Truman asked Oppenheimer what should be done with Los Alamos, and he says, give it back to the Indians. And I think that honestly makes it worse. Oh, now you want to give it back to them after you've irradiated the shit out of it? Sorry we took your land, but as a consolation prize, have some cancer! And there's one more thing I should mention. One of the things that really annoyed me about Tenet was the poor sound mixing, and sadly, that is present here as well. I lost track of how many times I had trouble hearing the dialogue because the soundtrack was too damn loud. This even happens in scenes that are in the trailer where you can hear the dialogue clearly because the people who cut the trailer are not assholes. And this is so infuriating because I know Christopher Nolan knows what good sound mixing sounds like. I know this because there's a scene in this very movie where he does it. When they do the Trinity test, of course, as it would have been in real life, you see the explosion before you hear it because it's several miles away and it's gonna take a few seconds for the sound to catch up to you. And in those initial seconds, you see that blast getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it is dead silent except for Oppenheimer's heavy breathing. And that's all you hear for those first few seconds. And that is just brilliant filmmaking. And as much as I love that scene, it just really pisses me off because if Nolan is giving us poor sound mixing, he's doing it on purpose. And it feels like such a fuck you to the audience and Nolan back at you. Anyway, despite all of my complaints, and you're probably gonna think I'm lying here after all that, but no, I do not think it's a bad movie. It is a good movie that could have been a great movie if Nolan would just get out of his own way. I know he's better than this, but he seems to have forgotten. And like I said in the Barbie vlog, if you have to choose between Barbie and Oppenheimer, see Barbie. And if you're going to see Oppenheimer, see it as a matinee and do not pay extra for IMAX. See it in a regular-ass theater on a regular-ass screen, you will be fine. And that's all I have to say about Oppenheimer. Till next time, take care.